Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's off 155. Nasdaq's up 27. S&Ps are uh, up about one and a half. Let's just go into that index for a See what is happening inside the NDX, Tom. So the leaders out here, you get JD.com is up 4.2%, Zoom 4%, NetEase 3.6%, and Regeneron 3 Taking away from it, United down 5.5%. You got uh, Cognizant Technology off 2.5%. Uh, Exelon is off 2.6%, uh, and NXPI is down 2.5%. Uh, if we take a look at this future as to... Uh, where we've been, uh, the NDX, folks, is right where we just uh, came down hard yesterday. So we'll see whether that baby can get over this uh, 91, uh, basically 69 area. Uh, what you have out here in all the indices, folks, is that when we came down fast and furious, when, Crow Cow when Powell started talking, that's a high volume low. So my take is that that's where we're going to basically be making our way um, uh, throughout the trading day. Oil, Tom, right? Oil. It's Wednesday, yeah. as if we don't have enough going on in the market right now. Okay. We got oil inventory numbers at 1030. Uh, we have the contract right now, 2552. Yesterday, pretty tame action, even at around uh, 230. Not too much volatility, as in within a dollar, right? 2520, you could call the lower end of the range, $26. So you're up around right in the middle of that. So let's jump over to the platform, see what kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, premium they're pricing in here. So we're trading at 2550. You have exposure from 25 if you want the dailies. I'm just jumping around for a moment. Um, so you could have exposure from 26 if you wanted the 230s here. Let's just see with the noons lineup, 2575 is an option. I'm just curious on the daily side because it's nice to have exposure till 230 with how crazy oil has yes. been trading anyway, um, especially as the, the 230 end of day technicality kind of approaches. We've had some real volatility, especially last week. So let's just see on the bullish side. If you're bullish, you're gonna have 56 cents of intrinsic value and you're gonna pay, I mean, not a bad trade if you're actually going bullish on crude. The contract's trading at 25.84. The underlying's at 25.56. So what are you paying, 30 cents, give or take, to have a defined risk down to $25? Um, not that bad with oil coming up, right? in my opinion. Right. And let's just see on the bearish side where you're going to be basically huge out of the money and you're paying $0.29 cents, um, if you really wanted to take a shot at some negative prices. you got a lot of room to make up there with $0.80 cents before you even break even. But Okay, so we got the whisper number up here. Okay, I just pulled it up. The, uh, not, not as big as recently, right? No. They're only looking for a rise of $4.8 million? Yeah. And then the survey's $4 million. Yeah. I'm going to go 5.2. Okay. Would that be right, right there? That would be right. Okay, so hold on. I want to make sure. I'm bearish, so that would be that, yeah, more oil, right? Yes, you would see a build of 55.2 million barrels yeah. versus a build of anywhere from 4 to 4.8, okay. right? So you see a, a slight rise in the supplies. Um, okay. More oil around for the same demand, just walking through the economics of it, right? Yes. You have those two curves meeting. You have a bunch of supply now. Well, what is everybody going to pay if you all of a sudden have a bunch of supply? The price is going to have to come down to sell that supply. Right. And you can see when we bring this chart up, I'll show you why, folks, okay? So this has had a, you know, nice bounce. I mean, we, we had that low out there, $6.50. You're right up to ice, and you can see this contract, there's no, there's no buyers up here, man. I mean, this is like a contraction of volume that's amazing. And this is the uh, active contract, folks. When I first pulled it up, it says, oh, this doesn't even make any sense. Yesterday, we did 212,000 contracts. Today, you're at 42,000 contracts. You know, that's very unusual, folks. You know, and what, what we could be seeing here, Tom, is this, is that because of the way that oil got so skewed, there's probably plenty of traders that are saying, I'm not dealing with it anymore. You know, that's what we might yeah. be seeing there. And we'll, you wouldn't know that, folks, for about another month, because if the volumes had gone down that dramatically, well, that's, that's okay. That just means that there's a lot less traders that are dealing with it because of the fact that they can't figure out in a risk-reward scenario where oil wants to go. You know, Do you think... 
Do you think the trader in that Bloomberg article that bought 212 futures contracts at a penny and woke up with a $9 million bill, is he still in the market trading oil, you nope. think, this morning? Exactly. <laughs> man, but, no, uh, man. It, it's, and that story, folks, okay, just so far over the top, it's unbelievable. And it's, it's real. Do you know what Thankfully, I mean? investment, um, who is it? Investment, bro, well, um, it's blanking me. Investment. Uh, Interbrokers. Was the, inter, interactive brokers, right. thank you. Uh, it seems like they're going to cover it, and they should, because I'm pretty sure they would have lost in court on that one anyway. It yeah. seems so egregious um, in terms of not allowing to display a negative price for oil. When the whole world had talked about it and knew about it, and they even sent out the you know testing capabilities for your platforms, all that stuff. They did. Uh, um, and they couldn't even factor in. I mean, think about the number of high-level, brilliant people that go into programming how margins work in a system like interactive brokers right and then to not figure out that uh has anyone checked whether everybody's margined for this going negative just didn't happen right and and what tommy's talking about folks this is really you really want to understand this the cme and the ice came out a week prior to negative gave a notice to all the broker dealers that you better be prepared that oil can go negative yes and what like ended up happening is that they didn't pay attention to it. What, no. I, I, the story, what happens, which I really can't understand, is that like if you're in a TD Ameritrade account, folks, okay, you're not going to be trading. They don't allow you to trade it the last week because then you have to deliver it. I can't. I, I didn't understand that part of it right. as well. I, I said, why are they? Why are they allowed to trade a, a deliverable? oil contracts right. when the guy started off with 74,000 bucks in his account, whatever it was, and he was buying hundreds of them. Yes. Um, and if you get it delivered, just so you understand, it's not like getting gold delivered or anything else. If, if you have enough money in your account, okay, the bottom line is the money comes out of the account, then you still got to take delivery, and, and there's certain um, parameters that you got to do to get delivery. Oil is a whole different ball game because you just don't put the money in your account and go get it. You need to have a deal with the pipeline. You got to have a deal with the storage for the oil. So it's like they, they you know, he owned yeah. up to it. He, they, they missed the mark, and they probably that was probably just laying out there forever, and they never got yeah. burnt on it. So it you had know. never gone negative, and and you could see right. why to. To an ordinary individual, yeah, it makes no sense. Of course, you didn't see it coming. This is interactive brokers, man. You know, they're one of the biggest brokerages out there. Ads running 24-7. People getting paid millions of dollars to run that company. Come on, get on that. And guess what? They're going to pay the price, man, because it's, what's it, $100-plus million dollars that it's going to cost them? Yes. Um, well, right. good. I'm sure it wouldn't have been as expensive had they just got on their horse um, and been prepared when that happened. Yeah, no doubt. So, uh, S&Ps, let's, let's take a look at this, because when, when Paul did come on, folks, this was a very fast move. Uh, the, what the S&P was trying to do is get down to the lows of last night. Now, the low, there was a little spike low last night of uh, 28.25. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got down to 28.32. Now, yeah, 28.32 right now is still a high-volume low. So, my take is that we're going to go there. The real question is going to be, do you blow that away? So... And it makes sense, right? Negative prices, just a, uh, negative interest rates. If the whole point is to incentivize people to take out loans, businesses to take out loans and spend money on capital. Yes. If you're not going to do it at zero percent, are you going to do it at negative one? No. 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 You're not. No. No. So. Yeah. Dow, Dow down at 207. Nasdaq up 18. S&P's uh, down three. Tell me, I'll be right back with those oil numbers, folks.